There are just two games remaining in the NBA season, and the Philadelphia 76ers may be facing their most important match of the entire season tonight. They will take on the Orlando Magic, who have quietly crept back into this mix of the playoff race, battling for the same kind of seeding that the Sixers are. I'm going to break down in this video the importance of tonight's matchup and take a look at kind of the playoff picture as a whole, how important this is as it pertains to the Sixers, and the overall outlook from here. So to start off with by just looking at the standings as a whole, and as you can see, the Boston Celtics continuing to run away with things, as has been the case for most of the season with their record. The Bucks, 13 games back for them in second place there and the race for the top of the east has gotten a little closer than it has been for most of the season that as you can see the bucks with their 49 and 31 record right behind them just one game behind them is the new york knicks with a 48 and 32 record and just a quick note on that if you're ranking which of those teams you would, i would prefer in the first round matchup Give me the Milwaukee Bucks 10 times out of 10 from the Sixers' perspective. I want the smoke with Doc Rivers. I want the revenge tour. I want to see those belt-to-ass tours going right in the Pat Bev pods mentions. I want that to be the case. And this New York Knicks team, they're tough. They're gritty. They'll wear you down. That at the worst, even if the Sixers are able to win that series, that's going to be a matchup that absolutely is brutal on everyone's body, wears you down, and will be difficult. I do think this Bucks team is falling apart at the seams. And frankly, I think this injury to Giannis is just another excuse being handed to Doc Rivers that I think even if that team was fully healthy, fully constructed, I still don't think they win their opening round series, particularly against the Sixers there. So I do hope that is the, how things shape out. But I want to dive a little more into what the Sixers can control here. So looking below that, we do have the Cleveland Cavs, just one game below the Knicks there with their 47-33 and 33 record. And then here's where things really get interesting. The Orlando Magic have dropped down to the 5 seed with their 46-34 and 34 record. They're tied with the Pacers who have the same record. And then right below them, at the seventh seed is the Sixers with their 45 and 35 record. And as I mentioned, the Sixers are set to square off with the Orlando Magic tonight. That is going to be one that has a lot of implications and has grown in importance for both sides. So we know that the Sixers were kind of scrapping their way out of things since Joel Embiid's return. But for the Magic, they were a little bit on cruise control for seemingly a lot of the second half of the season. And now all of a sudden, they got to be looking over their shoulder, that the play-in is within range for them, and that they got to come focused and take care of business tonight. And looking below that, the Miami Heat is really the only team to worry about. These Sixers have a, a full game lead above them. The Heat sitting at that eight seed. That victory over the Heat last week was massive for keeping them at a little bit of distance behind them. And assuming the Sixers went out, the Heat cannot catch them. So at worst, the Sixers would drop or would stay at the seven seed if they win their final two games. But looking below that, the, the Chicago Bulls and Atlanta Hawks locked in for that nine and 10 seed. So to kind of take a look at the probabilities here, again, a lot of this is out of the Sixers control at this point in time. What we do know is that if the Sixers win tonight against the Magic and win on Sunday against the Brooklyn Nets, they cannot drop below the seventh seed. But that, of course, means them taking care of business. But do climb up the standings above that, they will need a little bit of help. So to look at kind of the odds and how things can drop on the probability here, this is according to basketball reference that looking at the Sixers first round playoff seed, they have a 0.1% chance at the fourth seed a 2.8% chance at the 5th seed, a 15.5% chance at the 6th seed, 44.1% chance at that 7th seed there, and 23.4% chance for that 8th seed. So these numbers have grown a little bit here, but as you can see, just a 18.5% combined chance that they do climb up to that 1-6 to six seed for a lot of reasons that I mentioned, that they do need some help. And to dive into those specific reasons here, again, I've been a little confused with the tiebreakers, and to kind of address what specifically that are, that if it ends a two-way tie, the Sixers and one other team have the same exact record when the 82 games expire on Sunday, the first tiebreaker would be the head-to-head -head matchups between those two teams. However, if it ends up a three-team tie, then it would defer to the divisional record between those two teams. And to give a specific example here, for both the Magic and the Heat, if the Sixers end up as a direct tie, the same record with each of those teams, with just one of those teams, the Sixers would have the tiebreaker advantage because they have a better head-to-head -head record than both those teams. And that would even be the case if they lose tonight to the Magic, although that wouldn't put them in a good spot to tie because they already have a 2-0 series lead on Orlando. However, if this turned into a three-way tie, the Sixers would drop to third in the pecking order because of the divisional record there. So that is where things get a little confusing. But do take a look at kind of the path to avoid the play-in here. To, to get to the fifth seed, Philadelphia and Indiana would need to win their final two games, and then Cleveland and Orlando would need to lose their final two games. To get to the sixth seed, Philadelphia and Indiana would need to win their final two games, or Philadelphia wins their final two games, Orlando loses their final two games with their final game going against the Milwaukee Bucks there, and then Indiana splits their final two games. So a lot of complications here. I don't want to dive too deep into that because the main focus for Philadelphia should just be taking care of your own business. Make sure you win the games that matter and let the chips fall around. 
And even Nick Nurse has been pretty just deferring kind of questions about this, that he's been pretty straightforward on, I'm not worried about seeding. We're going to lace up and take on whoever the matchup is. He said he's not a guy that watches a ton of the standings and really more of the focus is internally on this team. And that is the right outlook to have. The bottom line is none of these conversations matter for what happens with the Pacers, what's happening with the Magic. If the Sixers aren't worried about themselves. But what I've seen over these past couple games and really growing since the return of Joel Embiid is this is a dangerous Sixers team. And to take a look at what this Sixers team is with Joel Embiid, 30-8 and eight on the season when he is on the floor, averaging 120.6 points per game. The bottom line, and this is no secret, this has been the case for several years, they are an elite team with Joel Embiid on the floor, and they're a tough team to watch without him. But that's all that matters, that we do have him on the floor, that he is back and in fold and ready to play on the, this playoff run. And I know it's a little bit of an overly optimistic slant, but the real talk is that if you were to go into the season and paint the best path to a healthy playoff run for Joel Embiid, it very well may be him getting hurt at the moment that he did. That he did have kind of a break, and obviously break's the wrong word because he had surgery, had to recover, go through the rehab process, all these things. But his body was able to rest for a two-month period in the middle of the season, and that he's very much capitalizing on that at this very moment. So he's still kicking off the rust. He does not look like fully himself. But frankly, I've been pretty uh, surprised and impressed with the way that he has looked. That he looks slim. He's moving well. He's still got that brace on. And the Sixers definitely have a concrete plan to ramp up his his return to play process, adding minutes to things. Played 36 minutes in the most recent game against the Pistons. That was not because they needed him to play all 36. But more so, I think, had to do with getting his body up to speed. And perhaps more important than the Joel Embiid side of things is they do have dogs around him. That when you look at this playoff rotation, and shout out to Sixers Galaxy here. This is the rotation for the start of the season versus the rotation now. So entering the season, the starting five for the Sixers, looking along the lines of Tyrese Maxey, DeAnthony Melton, P.J. Tucker, Tobias Harris, and Joel Embiid, with their bench unit looking like Pat Bev, Kelly Oubre, Jaden Springer, Danny Green, and Paul Reed. Now looking at what we have now, Kyle Lowry, Tyrese Maxey, Nico Batum, Tobias Harris, and Joel Embiid, and looking at the bench unit, Campaign, DeAnthony Melton, Buddy Heald, Kelly Oubre, and Paul Reed. That is some significant upgrades in my mind. And, and one guy that I want to highlight specifically here is Nico Batum. And I know some of you guys aren't the biggest fan of him in the comments. And we do see his weaknesses at time, most specifically during the period in which Joel Embiid was out. But Nico Batum is who we thought P.J. Tucker was. That he is a guy that can guard opponents number one. That defensively, he's held up on positions one through five. He was guarding Victor Wembanyama and holding up pretty well against in that San Antonio matchup. And when there are going to be some top perimeter options, he's going to be looked at to be that guy. And what's most valuable about his game is he, he's a guy built to compliment Joel Embiid, that his entry passes are absolutely terrific. Some of those passes that he made against the Spurs were some of the best that I've ever had. The one that stands out mostly is, you know, that little lay-in over the top to create the Tyrese Maxey game-tying attempt. He's also a very quick catch-and-shooter. He's a good three-point shooter. Again, good defensively. He's a guy that is everything we hope P.J. Tucker could be except more basketball substance to his ability. And looking beyond that, the Kyle Lowry versus Pat Bev kind of debate, I don't think there should be any conversation that Kyle Lowry has plenty left in the tank, and I will hand up say I was a little wrong about that and being overly concerned that he didn't have enough left. I don't know if it's going to be Lowry or Melton for that starting role, but that's a good problem to have, and both those guys are plus playoff players. Both those guys have skill sets that maximize are maximized on this team, and I'm very excited. We know the uh, championship pedigree that Lowry does possess. This is a team that has more options than I think a lot of Joel Embiid teams have had. And once again, it does fall on the shoulders of Joel Embiid, that we've yet to see him go on this dynamic, dangerous playoff run where he lights the world on fire and looks like the best player on the floor from start to finish. But could that be this year? It quite possibly could. That prior to his injury, I don't want to get lost what a historic season this guy is having. That year after year, he has continued to progress. And even after winning MVP last year, he came back and looked better. And we're still seeing areas of growth in his game since returning to injury. The playmaking strides that he took early on in the year, that is still there. That he had eight assists the other night. He's been flirting with triple doubles. That I give a huge credit to Nick Nurse. That with Doc Rivers and with the past couple years, there weren't these passes for him to make. With more fluidity in the offense, more movement, more backdoor cuts, more options for Joel Embiid to capitalize on. He's making teams punish when you throw irresponsible doubles and triples at him, which is necessary to stop the caliber of scorer that he is. And then beyond that, he's shooting more three-pointers. He took nine three-point attempts against the Detroit Pistons the other night. That is a huge step for growth for him. This has been something that I personally have pounded the table on. 
But I do think it's valuable to opening up his offense. Just having that threat from beyond the arc, and he's absolutely a good enough shooter to knock down those shots and has proven that throughout his career. Shot four of nine the other night. Those are great numbers. And I'm not saying we're going to be relying fully on him from beyond the perimeter, but I do think it's noteworthy that that's another element that seems to be a conscious addition to his game. So overall, we will see from here. I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. And I did just want to note for the injury report that currently for this Magic game, Joel Embiid, Kyle Lowry, and KJ Martin are listed as questionable. Tyrese Maxey, D'Anthony Melton, Tobias Harris are not on the injury report. Robert Covington is out, and Franz Wagner is questionable for the Magic. I expect this to be an all-hands-on-deck type of matchup. We've seen Joel Embiid, all the injury report concerns, so it wouldn't surprise me if this was a just thrown on there as a kind of a just-in-case situation. Lowry did miss the previous game as well. He's not playing back-to-backs, and clearly the focus is on all these guys being ready for the playoffs, but this is one that could aid their path in a significant way. I will be back following this game to kind of break down some of the playoff outlooks. We'll see how things shake out, how concrete things are if we wait until uh, Sunday after Sunday's game to have a full breakdown on that. But the bottom line is we're about to see what the path through the playoffs look for the Sixers team, and they would help themselves out a ton by taking care of business and knocking out the magic tonight. We'll see how it all shakes down. Let me know your predictions in the comments. Thank you guys for tuning in this video. Make sure you're smashing subscribe on Sixers Digest and drop it a like right here. Appreciate each and every one of you and talk with you next time. Peace.